Yes, um, I was asked to prepare a five minute speech, so I don't know if people are willing to listen to that or would want me just to pass comment. Well, yeah. 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 Thank you, Professor Hawkes, for that excellent introduction. It was great. And I think anyone listening to those statistics on my nutrition can see that this isn't a matter of absolute urgency. I've worked closely with the Food Foundation since we were established two years ago. And happy birthday, by the way. Sorry, I couldn't make it to your party. Um, I've also been one of the founders of the All Party Inquiry into Hunger in the UK. I'm currently a trustee of Feeding Britain and I'm a former member of the FRA Select Committee, where we did an inquiry into food sustainability. So I think it's safe to say that this is an issue that I'm very much involved in in Parliament, and I will continue to always be involved in it because I don't believe anybody, anywhere, should ever have to face the indignity of wondering where their next meal from. And whilst I understand completely that this is a global issue and it hits right at the heart of our world, I would like to focus a few of my brief comments, if that's okay, on some domestic issues. Um, anyone at all who is tuned in to what happens outside the walls of this palace knows full well the scale of hunger and poverty in our country. So it's been a constant source of frustration for me that despite my efforts and the efforts of others, that government will not acknowledge that there is a problem here in the United Kingdom. They refuse to measure food inequality or food poverty, poverty, let alone formulate policy solutions. In fact, it's my view, and it has always been my view, that they have actively at times pursued policies that may hunger in inevitability for so many, especially through the systematic erosion of our welfare safety net. The government law keep telling me that they are measuring food inequality, citing the Living Costs Food Survey, but we know that that isn't an adequate measure at all. In a recent debate, I called again on the government to close the data gap. I asked them to insert a short list of questions in an annual existing survey instrument, such as the Living Costs and Food Survey, or any of the national health surveys that we have. Now, the marginal cost of doing this is actually between £50,000 and £75,000. So that's less than the basic wage of most members of parliament in this place. Small sums in treasury terms to address one of the biggest scandals of our time. But government resistance still remains. Because the truth is that if you collect the data, then you know the true scale of the problem, then you have to do something about it. But if you refuse to ignore what's happening and not collect that data, then you can keep pretending that the problem just doesn't exist. This approach is consistent with the tax that I've seen on the Trussell Trust. When they've released numbers of hungry in the UK, I've seen secretaries of state and ministers repeatedly come to the dispatch box to try and discredit this research and say that the numbers are misleading. How long can they pursue this deceitful strategy? The UNICEF report published just last month found that the UK has some of the highest levels of hunger and deprivation out of the world's richest nations. Moderate or severe food insecurity was found to affect nearly 20% of children under the age of 15 in the United Kingdom. This makes us significantly higher than the average for all other developed countries. Now, I'm absolutely delighted that my party has listened and has taken this issue seriously. Our manifesto put some really bold policies in place, including a major public health strategy to improve the health and well-being of every single child in this country. We want to combat health inequalities and end the scandalous link between deprivation and child health. We want to introduce a child health bill setting in law our ambition for the UK's children to be the healthiest in the world, and legally requiring all government departments to have a child health strategy to set out how they want to support this ambition. We would also enshrine the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child into domestic law. We'd introduce a new child health index jointly between the Department for Health and Public Health England to measure progress against international standards and report annually against four key indicators, including obesity, dental health, 
hundred dollars in medical help. At the moment, there's no standardised data collection on child health indicators within the national comparisons. So in order to measure progress, we would also establish one. Sadly, we have to be in government for that to happen, and we aren't. So in opposition, I am going to continue to push the government on a measurement. I continue to work with the Food Foundation and others to try and get a 10 minute rule bill off the ground. And I will never give up until I start seeing some real results and eradicate some of the scourge of poverty that's in our country. I refuse to accept and always will that food poverty and inequality is a normal part of our society. In the meantime, I just want to say thank you to some of you in this room because you are doing a lot to help the hungry fill in that gate and hole that's left by the state. The weight of evidence now and public opinion is on our side. When an empowered opposition against an enfeebled government, we have an opportunity now to force the government's hand in trying to address this problem once and for all. I hope those of you who I've already worked with will continue to help me do that, and those I haven't, I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.